Hey, this is Thomas with TJE Builds, and my goal here is to turn some scrap OSB into something beautiful and functional. I think a lot of people use really nice wood scraps to make beautiful things, and that's great, but what if you have leftover or scrap pieces of the ugliest type of construction lumber? To start, I did what any true woodworker would do and put off cleaning a little longer to complete this project. Anyways, I had one piece of OSB left over from when I sheathed the outside wall of my shop. I also had a bunch of scrap laying around as well from other projects I've done throughout the year. So these are the two pieces for the top of the desk and it's gonna be 60 by 24. I drew out the leg shape from the picture I drew earlier except in larger form here on this other piece of OSB and then I spent a little while cutting it out and trying to be as accurate as possible as this was gonna be the piece to shape the other leg on the flush cut router. So the next big problem to tackle is I don't have any more of this OSB that's big enough because this piece is about 60 inches long and I don't have anything that I can fit this shape into and then flush cut anymore. So how I'm gonna solve that is I'm basically just gonna take all of my scraps that I have laying around like over here and cut smaller pieces of it and glue it to one side. And then I'm gonna take that, trim it on my bandsaw, and then flush cut it again. After piecing those things together, I then put them on the ground, put a little bit of plastic between them so they didn't stick together accidentally. And then I put a bunch of weight on them so they'll glue up really nice and tight. Well, after a day of letting this glue dry, we are gonna take all this stuff off of there and hopefully it set up pretty well. After roughly cutting these out on the bandsaw, I checked them to see, and yep, I'm a donk, and I have a nail sticking out here and a nail sticking out there, so I quickly ground those off with my angle grinder. After making sure the nails were out of the way, I ran them down the flush cut router and then on this 45 degree angle chamfer bit to give them a nice clean edge, or as clean as OSB can be. I then hand sanded these legs with 100 grit sandpaper as I didn't want to use my orbital sander and risk tearing out big chunks or messing up that clean edge. Here you'll notice I forgot to turn the camera on and so I used a different clip in reverse to make it look like I was clamping. About halfway into this I realized that I left half my clamps at my house from a project I was doing at home. So this is what we got and there's no real pressure in the middle so hopefully that's fine. But please tell me why it's a bad thing in the comments. Let me know. Well, that thing about this not having pressure on it in the middle came back to haunt me. Look at this nice gap we have here. Yay! So we're gonna try uh, option number two, and I'm basically just gonna put a bunch more glue in there, and we're gonna put a bunch of screws through the top here to pull it together while it dries. We can take the screws out later, but I just need something to tug it closed. Because I'm truly awful at turning on my camera, I definitely forgot to record this part, but essentially I took two more pieces of scrap and glued them together as a cross support to join the legs together kind of near the bottom. And again, I used that 45 degree bit to put that chamfer on the edge here. I think oftentimes I get in my own head and think I have to do some kind of crazy joinery because, you know, just a traditional screw is not gonna be good enough. But the reality is that putting a screw and then just hiding the fact that there's hardware right there is often the best and it's definitely the easiest way to go. Here I used a temporary support to hold the legs together while I moved it. So maybe this is controversial, but I really cannot stand applying finishes. I hate painting traditionally. So I listened to the little voice in my head that said, spray paint's gonna be fine. It's just an OSB project. To me, spray paint is the cop-out way, the easy way, but that's just me. Next on the list is to take the top of this table, make sure that the bottom is facing upwards. Then I'm gonna use that same bit that I used on the legs to give it that chamfer. And I'm gonna do a really big one, as big as it can, all the way around on the bottom side to give it kind of an angled look. I hit it with some putty here because I had left a bunch of gaps from a pretty terrible job of gluing. And then I got the orbital sander out and tried to sand everything down just a hair before applying some leftover Minwax something something satin finish. I don't know, it was sitting on the shelf and I just didn't want to waste epoxy on the bottom. So I coated this thing really, really thick in that so that I wouldn't get splinters on my legs from the bottom. While the bottom dries, I then got to work on the box that is gonna surround the filing cabinet I bought from the illustrious Walmart. I 
After a quick test fitting, I took a little bit more scrap, cut some tiny little squares, that way I can make some feet for this thing. Next, I started working on a simple but effective way to attach this box to the rest of the desk, which I'll show you how that works later. After the bottom had dried, I moved it back over here where I put a bunch of plastic and cardboard on the ground and then began mixing epoxy. Now, full disclosure, it actually took three coats of epoxy, but that was turbo boring to watch. So instead of that, I'm just gonna show you one coat. Oh, look at that fresh gleam on that dank wood. Anyhow, I did nothing elaborate whatsoever to attach the base to the tabletop. I literally just took some angle brackets I had laying around in my shop and a couple screws to attach this thing. The only adjustment I did have to do was to cut some of those angle brackets as they were too tall. Now here's the part I mentioned earlier about how I was gonna attach the cabinet part to the desk itself, and it's super simple. That little box I built earlier just fits around this scrap piece of two by four, and as long as I attach it pretty straight, I can just set the desk into place and let gravity do all the work. Desk is complete. It's facing you, obviously. I would probably change a few things if I was to do it again. For instance, it's kind of shaky and that's because there's not a lot of support from these legs. They're pretty thin and this top weighs a lot, especially with all that epoxy on top of it. But it's very functional. I'm gonna do a lot of work here. So click on this link up there. That would be tight, 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 tight. Peace.